So can a believer have a demon? Get off the bus. Come on. Go. Go. How did you come in? How did you come in? Her parents hate her. Her parents hate her. Her parents. Go. In Jesus' name, out of every single one of you, out. Yeah, absolutely they can. Well, how is that possible? They have the Holy Spirit. Well, you see, when we become born again, our spirits is joined to the Holy Spirit. We're created in true righteousness and holiness. We're a new creation created in true righteousness and holiness. Everything's made brand new, but guess what? The Bible tells us to renew our mind. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That shows that even though in the spirit that we are right with God and we're aligned, our soul needs to come aligned with what happened in the spirit. So it's like your soul and spirit fit together like a glove. Now, say you put on a glove and you're missing a finger. You have this area where that's not being covered. Same way, well, our soul is supposed to fit our spirit, but if there's an area that we're not in agreement with Jesus, the enemy can actually get an access point there. Now, how does the, the enemy get an access? Well, the enemy actually gets an access point to a believer through agreement. Simple as that. Well, sin is actually agreement with the devil. So when we willingly sin, say you're a believer, but you're looking at pornography or you're opening up the door, guess what? You're actually coming under the devil's authority in that place. See, God gave you all authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. It says that in Luke chapter 10. But with authority is we can hold it and use it or we can give it away. Now, when you come into agreement with the devil, you're giving your authority to the devil and you're actually allowing the devil to be over you in this life because you are a slave to who you obey. So if you're obeying the devil, guess what? You're becoming a slave to him, meaning coming in bondage to him. In the Bible, you know, there's not many examples of believers having demons in the Bible. And one of the main reasons is they actually cast demons out. If you read throughout all the gospels, everywhere Jesus went, he cast out demons. If you read, you know, uh, throughout the book of Acts, the disciples, when they went to a place and preached the gospel, demons would screech out and they actually took care of the deliverance at salvation. Nowadays, we have a major problem in the church because we've reduced the gospel to say this prayer. Now, someone who's demonized can say the prayer and they actually could actually get born again, but it doesn't mean they're delivered because if we don't cast out demons out of people, they don't get cast out. And there's an epidemic in the church right now to where there's a lot of believers that are going in repetitive cycles, repetitive failures. The enemy is just destroying their lives because guess what? The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you're in agreement with the devil, what's he going to do? He's going to kill, he's going to steal, he's going to destroy your life. And that's why, that's why also why it's so important to avoid sin because not because God, you're going to make God angry, but because God knows that that sin is going to destroy you. And God loves you. But what happens is these people never get free. And then they go to their pastor and they're like, hey, pastor, you know, I, I, I'm struggling in this area. And I feel I've been having demonic nightmares or this is happening or I'm constantly depressed. And a lot of times the pastor will like, well, believers can't have demons. Or I, I've actually had a lot of people come to me where they tried to get help because they had demonic bondage. So they went to their pastors and the pastor just said, oh, you're basically said, you're just crazy. Believers can't have demons. Now, when that person got free, they become some, when those people get free, they become some of the most fruit filled, crazy spirit filled people that you could ever meet. So we come into agreement with the enemy through number one sin. When we're sinning, we're under agreement with the devil. We're actually feeding our flesh and we're giving the devil a foothold. Uh, the other one is believing the devil's lies. When we have a false theology about God or we have a false ideology or we're believing, say the devil says something. For Here's a good example. Say the devil says you're worthless, you're this, you're that. And you start actually believing those lies the devil's telling you that God, you have an agreement with the devil there. So the enemy grabs it. You see, and then another thing is sometimes the enemy is just a punk. Sometimes you grow up in it. Um, I've actually seen generational curses and stuff like that being on people, meaning their parents practice witchcraft and that demon sees the children. They're like latch on to the children. So those are just areas that the enemy grabs a hold of a believer. Now, when you come to Jesus, 
part of the process of deliverance is actually coming out of agreement with the devil and making Jesus king over that area that the devil had a hold. In the Bible, though you don't see many, you don't see examples of believers having demons, you do see Jesus giving some pretty stern warnings about not continuing in sin. For example, in John chapter 5, verse 14, you know, there's a lame man that Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. And then later on, he found him in the temple and he warns him. He says, hey, don't go back to sin, lest worse things come upon you. Or So it shows that 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 sin was actually tied to that man's sickness. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 21 through 35, actually, you see this king, and uh, a servant comes to the king, and he owes a lot of money, and he can't pay it off. So he cries out to the king for mercy, and the king has mercy. So that servant sees someone else who owes him money, and he ended up throwing that guy in prison. So when the king found out that he had mercy on this guy, but this guy wouldn't have mercy on someone else, he threw him in prison, and here, listen to this verse. It says, And his master was angry, delivered him to the torturers, until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father will also do to you if each one of you from the heart does not forgive his brother of his trespasses. So you see, basically, this is saying, if you are forgiven, if I've forgiven you, you have to forgive others. The Bible says, for, you know, if you don't forgive the sins of any, you're not forgiven. So the devil actually has a hold of your life through sin. If you're not forgiven of sins, the devil has a hold of those sins. And if you choose to withhold forgiveness towards people, that becomes an open door for the devil. And that shows it right there in scripture. So when I came to Jesus, I came out of all kinds of sin. Uh, I was deep in witchcraft in the new age and I opened so many doors to the demonic. Now, when I became a believer, I would have nightmares where every night, just about every other night, I would be strangled by a shadowy figure. Um, I'd be tormented constantly. I would be flooded with suicidal thoughts and just this intense depression. And just no matter what I did, I could not break free. And then every night I'd feel something touching me. So I knew that I had demons. I just didn't have a grid for deliverance. So I remember going to pastors and some pastors were like, well, believers can't have demons. Uh, other pastors had no grid for how to deliver demons. So. You know, I remember fasting with a, with a pastor and it was amazing, but he just didn't know how to help me. And then, you know, I, I started searching online. So I started calling deliverance ministers and some of them were really whack. I remember talking to one lady. She was like, oh, take the Bible and rub it on your skin because the demons hate that and it burns them. And I'm just sitting there feeling like an idiot rubbing a Bible trying to get rid of these demons. Now, for me, I had a lot of areas of my life that were just in compromise, areas of my life that the devil had a hold, and I didn't realize the sins that I was holding on to, and even unforgiveness, was giving the devil a right to attack me. So, you know, for the dreams, the nightmares where I'd be strangled, I had unforgiveness toward my stepdad. One night, God spoke to me, said, I need to forgive my stepdad. As soon as I release forgiveness, I had authority to cast that thing out of my dreams myself, and then I haven't had dreams since like that. Six years into my walk uh, as being a believer, I was constantly in repetitive cycles where I'd fall in pornography, I would fall in drinking, I would just continually just fail and miss it. And one day God spoke to me and said, what would it look like if you gave me 100%? So I, I never thought I could give God 100%. I always thought I'm always gonna be in struggle, this was just my life, woe is me who could save me from this body of death. But when God said that, Something in me sparked alive, and I'm like, I could give God 100%. That night I had a dream where God was showing me all these different areas of my life that I, I had idols in my life. So I woke up in the morning and just all the sin in my life cut it off my life. And then shortly after that, he filled me with fire where I started going to church again. And then um, I just got baptized with the Holy Spirit, filled with the fire of God. Now, I was a believer for six years. I even spoke in tongues, but this was something totally different. I felt the fire of God fill my chest, but something happened after this encounter that I normally don't share, but for this video, I wanna share. When I went up to go talk to the pastor, I felt something in me swinging at him, and it was detached. It was in me, but it was detached from me now. And then it, it left my body, and I'm like, what was that? 
And I was tripping out because that, that demon that had a hold of me, when I came into agreement with God and got filled with the fire of God, it couldn't hang out anymore. So with deliverance, you know, if you have sin that opened a door to a devil, you have to actually repent, meaning turn from that sin and come out of agreement with that enemy. Same thing, if, you, if the demon has a hold of your life through a false theology or a false identity or a false, like basically when we start believing things that are contrary to the word of God, the devil's like, I got you here. So I just want to make this video kind of to bring more awareness to this subject because I believe God is cleaning house inside the church. Um, God is actually setting, you know, he's setting people free and judgment begins in the house of the Lord. So anyway, let me pray over you, okay? Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you release freedom over everybody watching this video, God, that you bless them, God, that you just, just bless and use this video for your glory, God, that you'd use this video to help people get free in Jesus' name.